Welcome back to the EasyMed channel where medical topics are made easy. In this video, we're gonna discuss the conduction system of the heart and we're gonna walk through it step by step. We'll focus mainly on the intrinsic conduction system, but there's also external influencers from the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system that speed up the heart rate, slow down the heart rate, and even influence the contraction of the heart. We'll discuss that in a different video. So as we walk through the conduction system, we're gonna use this heart diagram. So let's go ahead and first label the anatomy. So that way we know what we're talking about through the rest of the video. So there's four main chambers in the heart, the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. The atria sit at the superior upper portion of the heart, and the ventricles sit at the lower inferior portion of the heart. Then we have the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. These are the main veins that deliver the venous blood from the rest of the body back to the heart, specifically the right atrium. And then we have the main pulmonary artery or pulmonary trunk. This emerges from the right ventricle and it delivers the unoxygenated blood to the pulmonary circulation to get oxygenated. Lastly, we have the aorta, which is the main blood vessel that emerges from the left ventricle and delivers oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. Now that we have a good understanding of the anatomy of the heart, let's talk about the conduction system. The heart has what's called automaticity, which is the innate ability to generate its own action potentials, which leads to depolarization and contraction of the heart. And it does this using specialized cells within the myocardium. So the myocardium of the heart has two main cell types. The first cell type is the pacemaker cells or the nodal cells. These are the specialized cells within the myocardium that have the ability to generate their own action potentials. And this leads to depolarization of the heart and ultimately contraction. These cells are primarily located in the SA node, the AV node, bundle of his, right and left bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. That's what makes up the bulk of the intrinsic conduction system of the heart, and that's what we're gonna mainly focus on today in this video. The other cell type is the contractile cells. This is what makes up the bulk of the myocardium. These are the cardiac muscle cells that lead to squeezing and contraction that ultimately pushes blood forward. We're gonna focus on the pacemaker cells because that's what makes up the conduction system. In a normal functioning heart, the conduction system starts with the SA node. The SA node is composed of lots of those pacemaker cells that have the ability to generate their own action potentials. The SA node is located in the back of the right atrium near the entry point of the superior vena cava. So the pacemaker cells within the SA node and the rest of the conduction system are unique. Their action potential does not have a true resting phase. The voltage across the cell membrane slowly becomes more positive until it meets that threshold to generate an action potential and depolarize. If you want more information on cardiac action potentials, I encourage you to check out the EasyMed video that makes cardiac action potentials easy. So as mentioned before, the SA node is the main pacemaker in a normal functioning heart. And the pacemaker cells within the SA node generate action potentials that lead to the heart beating approximately 60 to 100 times per minute. So if you ignore the external influences that the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system have on the heart, and you just focus on the automaticity of the heart, the SA node will lead to the heart beating approximately 60 to 100 times per minute. This is known as the normal sinus rhythm. Once an action potential is generated by the SA node, the action potential will travel to the left atrium using Bachmann's bundle, and it will travel through the right atrium using the internodal pathway. And as this action potential travels through the atria, it'll lead to atrial depolarization. And when these atrial myocytes or muscle cells become depolarized, they're going to contract. So this is how atrial contraction occurs. This atrial depolarization will create the P wave that you see on EKG. So if you wanna see how the conduction system can be applied to the different parts of an EKG, I encourage you to check out the EasyMed video that makes EKGs easy. Once the action potential generated by the SA node travels through the left atrium, as well as the right atrium and internodal pathway, it will converge on another node called the AV node. The AV node is located at the base of the right atrium near the interventricular septum. So it acts as a gatekeeper sending the action potential from the atria down to the ventricles. Similar to the SA node, the AV node also is composed of lots of those pacemaker cells that have the ability to generate their own action potentials. The key difference here though, is that the pacemaker cells in the AV node generate action potentials at a slower rate. So for example, if we wiped out the SA node and it was just the AV node that was leading to the heart rate, then the heart would beat approximately 40 to 60 beats per minute. So this is why in a normal functioning heart, it's the SA node that's the primary pacemaker because it creates action potentials at a faster rate than the AV node, so it essentially masks the AV node. The other important function of the AV node is that it slows down the conduction velocity of the action potential. This is really important, and the reason it does this is because it allows time for the atria to contract before depolarizing the ventricles, which will lead to ventricular contraction. 
If there was no delay, then the atrium ventricles would be contracting at the same time, and that would be counterintuitive and it would affect blood flow. We want the atria to first contract and push all their blood into the ventricles, then we want the ventricles to contract to then push blood forward into the pulmonary circulation into the rest of the body. Once the action potential travels through the AV node, it will continue through the interventricular septum using the bundle of his, followed by the right and left bundle branches, followed by the Purkinje fibers which spread throughout the ventricular myocardium. As the action potential travels through this portion of the conduction system, it's going to lead to ventricular depolarization. And as the ventricular myocytes or muscle cells become depolarized, it's going to lead to ventricular contraction. The right bundle branch will depolarize mainly the right ventricle, and the left bundle branch will mainly depolarize the left ventricle. Similar to the SA node and AV node, the bundle of his right and left bundle branches and Purkinje fibers contain lots of those pacemaker cells that have the ability to generate their own action potentials. The key difference here, however, is that these pacemaker cells generate action potentials at an even slower rate than the pacemaker cells of the SA node and AV node. So if there were no SA node or AV node and it was just this portion of the conduction system leading to the heart rate, the heart would beat approximately 20 to 40 times per minute. So let's briefly recap the main components of the intrinsic conduction system of the heart. We started off with the SA node, which was located in the back of the right atrium near the superior vena cava. The SA node produces action potentials at a rate of approximately 60 to 100 beats per minute. This action potential then traveled to the left atrium using Bachmann's bundle and traveled through the right atrium using the internodal pathway. As the action potential traveled through the atria, it led to atrial depolarization and contraction. After the action potential traveled through the atria, it converged on the AV node. The AV node sits at the base of the right atrium near the interventricular septum. It acts as the gatekeeper that sends the action potential from the atria down to the ventricles. It also slows down the conduction velocity of the action potential to allow time for the atria to contract before the ventricles contract. The action potential then exited the AV node and entered the bundle of his followed by the right and left bundle branches, followed by the Purkinje fibers. As the action potential traveled through this portion of the conduction system, it led to ventricular depolarization and ventricular contraction. Hopefully this was a good walkthrough of the conduction system of the heart. If you found the video useful, please hit the like button down below or feel free to leave a comment. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button before you go so you don't miss out on future videos that make medicine easy. I'm also gonna link the EasyMed blog that correlates with this video down below in the description. Thanks for watching, and I hope you check out future videos.